Hello and welcome to this webinar. We are very happy to find you here. My name is Frederick Linz. I'm the CEO of Exhaustive Labs and today uh, we'd like to uh, discuss with you about uh, a game-changing uh, capability of some of our product that is massive real-time data capture from FPGA and uh, we'll try to show you in this presentation how uh, this can lead you to success especially if you uh, deal with complex FPGA such as UltraScale plus FPGA. You can see here figures that we gathered from an existing study that's conducted every two years by uh, Siemens EDA, we can see that, well, the rate of success of uh, FPGA reaching uh, the production without bugs is not very high. And we can see that about more than 80% uh, of the FPGA's uh, projects uh, over the years, so we, this study was conducted in 2016 up to 2020, well, uh, about 80% of them reach production with bugs in there. And the question is why, of course, because uh, even if that share has not evolved much, it probably, probably means that uh, the design flow is evolving with the complexity of, um, of, of, of FPGAs. Uh, it has not improved either. And so, um, that rather large share of project reach production with bugs and we think that something that an effort that was not made on the FPGA design flow is what happens at the late stages that is uh, at the stages where you test FPGA on a real board or on a board uh, prototype and according to us uh, FPGA technology has all ground uh, the traditional debug methodology there and so, uh, what is uh, exactly a massive real-time data capture as we, we, we refer to in this presentation? Well, according to us, it consists in leveraging uh, the internal resources of the FPGA to uh, mobilize them and gain a, real, a really usable visibility. And to do what? Well, basically watch the FPGA as it runs uh, in its uh, in a real environment and that clearly will require uh, gigabytes of storage for traces and also a gigabit per second of bandwidth to extract those traces but also some functionalities that you require to um, navigate the complexity of high and FPGA designs and so the goal of this is to uh, capture things that you are unable to see with a simulation-based approach uh, and typically these are the flaws or the behavior that occur uh, because the environment of the FPGA is not as expected in the simulation or due to ran a random combination of events. And so one of the benefits of working at that level, that is uh, watching the FPGA as it uh, runs in its environment at speed and on the real hardware, is first of course that each scenario it will be fast because it relies on the execution of the FPGA. Uh, as realistic as possible, the goal is of course to let the FPGA run at speed in its environment and enable the exploration of the behavior of your FPGA uh, beyond the first uh, millisecond or even uh, beyond. So that approach, that is watching the FPGA as it uh, uh, runs in its environment and mobilizing the proper resources to get a real visibility, uh, well, that the goal is uh, to scale with the complexity of your FPGA and uh, have a very useful, uh, have uh, uh, at least a very useful approach. And so today I'd like uh, to demonstrate this with an example that we have. And for this, I'm going to use 
this board from Xalinx, which is, which is equipped with a Xalinx Vertex Ultrascale FPGA. And as you, as you can see on the, on, on the figure here, uh, we connect this board to uh, our exhaustive probe uh, through this cable. And so uh, we have a 50 gigabit per second bandwidth link uh, through the FPGA transceivers, SERDIS, uh, between the FPGA and this probe, and this probe contains uh, up to 8 gigabyte of storage. So we change the scale here. We are speaking about gigabytes and gigabit per second. And the example I'm going to demonstrate today is the following. It is based on a rather typical architecture for video processing applications. And in such application, it's, it's frequent to use an external DDR4 SDRAM to store some video frames and have some processing on both sides of the DDR4 memory. So you will have some processing over here at the right side and some processing over here at the read side. And what's interesting is that this data flow uh, it goes that way and is very much well there is a, a, a delay of five frames in this case because this is what we store in the memory that's usually difficult to investigate investigate because of the the effect that can uh, appear uh, on one side whereas they have been caused on the right side here on this setup i've got the ability to generate a bug uh, on the right side logic and of course this bug will have repercussions all over, uh, well, on all uh, the data flow, including here, here, and there. You can see also that we are speaking about full HD uh, frames with NCRA data, and everything gets uh, stored into uh, the uh, memory. So we have instrumented this design with uh, an exhaustive IP, and you can see that we have connected what we call a capture unit on both sides of the DDR4 uh, write and so write and read uh, logics. And uh, worth noting, uh, this uh, logic works on a different clock domain, is in, in a different clock domain than this one, so we don't have the same sampling clocks on both sides. We will see why it's important and what we do for it. And finally, uh, the exhaustive IP is connected to uh, the exhaustive probe over here, uh, which is external to the FPGA, and we do that with the transceiver with through a 50 gigabit per second link. And main memory storage is here. Uh, you see, we have uh, some share of this 8 gigabyte reserved from each cap for each capture unit. And of course, the challenge in our case is uh, that, uh, for instance, we will detect a bug at the read side during a visual inspection of the picture that would be displayed on the on the screen, for instance. And from that event, that observed event, we have a need to track the bug up to the right side of the logic. And the challenge is, of course, that from the occurrence of the bug to the observation of the bug, you have at least 83 milliseconds, which is uh, the, the five frame storage in the DDR4, and uh, that amount of, uh, of data. So in the demonstration, we will proceed with the bug investigation. So once it is created, it is going to be uh, observed first at the read side over here. So and the first work we we'll have to do is try to define a trigger condition to uh, to, to to detect uh, this uh, random bug at every time. So we will try to to see what it does and and put a trigger on it. And so that trigger will be uh, useful to investigate whether first the problem is not here, but then we we will quickly come to the conclusion that it's not there indeed. And we will need to forward the trigger over to another capture unit to say, hey, I've detected something over here. Why don't you uh, capture what has happened before it, but in your own clock domain? Uh, 
And what's interesting to see is that we have to do two things. That is, forwarding that, that uh, trigger to the capture unit that's located on the right side, but also we have to accommodate for the large history. When we see that bug over here, uh, it's probably due to a cause that has happened more than five, fr five frames before it. And so here we will make uh, the most of uh, the huge memory we have in the storage and also an ability to position or trigger at the end of the capture over here. So, and by doing that, then we will have an event and be able to watch whether uh, the bug occurred uh, in uh, the right logic, as of course we know already. So you see here, it's uh, the exhaustive uh, dashboard software, and I'm going to turn on my camera as well. Yes, here we go. We should see the camera now. And you see, I've got my, my board already up and running. And the FPGA is already loaded with the example design I've just described. It's running, you see the blinking LED, and it's already instrumented with uh, the exhaustive IP. So to generate the bug, I will have to push on one of these buttons. And you see, we have already the setup ready. I need to power up my probe. In this interface, I first need to recall uh, my uh, project settings. Here we go. And we will use this interface to uh, capture uh, data and, 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 and investigate the bug. You see on the first, uh, on the top of the window, you have some tabs and we will get we will use those two tabs only you see this is the capture unit located at the right side of the ddr4 and this is uh, the capture unit located at the right side of it and how over here for each of these capture unit we have control for the trigger controls for the capture a wave from viewer to display to, to display the waves that we have captured and so on and so the first step is for me to um connect the USB probe uh, to the design. And uh, as you see over here, the first step that, one well, the first things that it does is uh, establishing a connection uh, with uh, the, the, the exhaustive IP that's in the design. So we have a stable connection uh, on uh, the transceivers. Let's have a look at uh, the frame buffer read. So we have, uh, positioned a capture unit on the read side of uh, the logic of the DDR4. And uh, well, I'm going to run a, a, a first capture to show you what we have. Yes, here I capture five times something, so a chunk of data that starts of the start of frame of, of the data. And you can see here that we have indeed a video interface with its red, green, and blue uh, components. And in this case, we have run a multiple capture and with a trigger, you see the trigger lines over here uh, on the start of frame. So we are on the beginning of each frame over here. So uh, on, on the other side of the logic, we have something very similar. And uh, if I run a very, uh, a simple capture over here, uh, you see that we have indeed uh, the same uh, kind of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of signal. And so during the inspections, we see, okay, um, we have a bug that actually what we see is that we have some dark pixels uh, now and then on uh, the display. And for this, we say, mm, we are going to, to, to try to, to Put a trigger on that and for this i put a trigger so i'm on the read side logic of the ddr4 and say look i'd like to see whether uh, the red component goes to zero zero and we say okay i'd like to capture three of these bugs and each time i'm going to trigger on that so i'm, I'm arming the trigger now and you see that it's waiting for a trigger over here we are still on one side of the logic and you see as i I'm going to show you um, when I'm generating the bugs. You see here, 
I've got uh, my, my finger on the button and when I hit the button like now, you see that in the interface we have a trigger and so the third one over here. And so you see that we have captured some waves in the waveform window and when we locate when we, we have a look at what happened on the trigger, uh, you see over here that indeed you see that component is going down to zero. So the bug is really that pixel that, pixel that suddenly uh, goes to zero. So like explained in the presentation, uh, well, the bug is really inserted at the right side logic of the DR4, not here. So we will proceed with an investigation and hey, we don't find any cause for it at the uh, 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 right uh, at the read side logic. Uh, you see over here, we are at this step. We have detected it and say, okay, we have a, a trigger on it, but we don't find anything here. So now we are going to forward that trigger to the right side capture unit and capture some history before it, at least five frames. Here, my trigger is still uh, this, and I say I only want to capture one of them and then I can switch over to the uh, capture unit uh, right on the right side and say hey here locally I'd like to react from on the trigger condition generated by this capture unit and so for this I can use this and say okay I'm going to enable the event that's generating on the frame buffer read capture unit over here so it's enabled over here and since the two capture units are located in different clock domains the common clock is left uh, unchecked so with this my trigger is ready here I have to remove this this is this would be a combination so on one end I say I'm going to detect if the red component goes to zero because of the bug this event is forwarded to the right side logic and on the right side logic I still need to capture a sufficiently long capture at least five frames and from the dim dimension of my frames I say that here 20 million samples would be sufficient we will see but most importantly what I have to do is position my trigger at the end of the capture so here locally I'm going to receive this trigger from the other capture units and I run a capture of 20 million samples positioning my trigger over here. And of course, I need to run the two capture units together. So let's go for it. Two capture units harming the trigger. And you see that both of them are waiting for the event to occur. So once again, I'm going to push on my button so that you can see live when it's happening so over here yeah focus is not good sorry about that and up i if push the button and so both triggers have triggered and so uh the data is being encoded in the waveform viewers and so now we have the results so you see that here we have the same condition as before something we have shown so that we have indeed had a bug and for on the other end let's have a look you see that my trigger is over here at the end of the capture you see here this is a start of frame signal of uh, the video flow at the right side logic we have one two three four five six seven so at least well seven frames before the trigger so it should be sufficient to find the event that we are looking for and uh, you see i'm going to search uh, for a value at zero here Here it has found something, and so of course this is this is an example for the demonstration, and we see that indeed the bug has occurred at the right side logic.
this is really something that uh, you, you can do uh, because uh, Exhaustive has first a large capture capability, second uh, an ability to, to place uh, capture logic on uh, different clock domains. We need to capture megabytes or even gigabytes of data so the huge storage is, is of course important but that huge storage can't be used unless you have a high bandwidth here to extract the data because there is no way you can store that kind of uh, data information in the FPGA and finally that unique ability of uh, being able to send a trigger across clock domains is very useful here because it allows us to detect something in one clock domain and trigger something on the other clock domains. In such a case this is not something that a boundary scan tool is able to provide to you. Here we'd like to share with you uh, additional uh, use case that we gathered from the reality from our customers here. This is a case of a customer uh, designing FPGA-based demodulator system for satellite communication. And in this case, the goal for them was to verify that what they had implemented in the FPGA actually matched the theoretical algorithm that they had designed in MATLAB for them. Uh, running a uh, long simulation with the simulation with the with the FPGA was painful and of course they wanted also to uh, test the algorithm against a real kind of uh, signal coming from a real antenna capturing a satellite source and so they have uh, used exhaustive to on different taps of this uh, uh, data processing FPGA the demodulator and build up a database that they could uh, use to compare uh, the result of the algorithm running in the FPGA with what they had designed in MATLAB. So that's a first case where uh, massive real-time data capture from FPGA has been very useful to prove that the algorithm was uh, okay and conformed to, to the specs. This is another case where uh, we have a customer who really uh, wanted to uh, thoroughly validate an IP and the fear that they had a non-perfect modelization in, in, in the simulation. And so they had decided to use, uh, they have decided to use exhaustive uh, and, and place this IP in a real setup and um, wrap a, an exhaustive IP around the, this IP and so that they use really exhaustive as a recorder and with this recorder they could build a database of test vectors a very important one uh, that actually matched the reality because anything that was entering the IP was a real kind of stimulus with the randomness uh, and perfection and, and the rest and this IP uh, was, uh, well, this database of test vectors was used, has been used as a test case in the test bench environment. So in this case, uh, Exhaustive has been used to complement the validation they ran in simulation. So Exhaustive in short, this, is, uh, this tool is composed of a probe, a software used to insert an IP ins insert inside the target FPGA and you can capture up to 32K nodes per FPGA max. We have 8 gigabytes of memory and 50 gigabit per second bandwidth. We can operate at speed and we cover a wide variety of uh, FPGA families, but of course, uh, exhaustive is especially useful for very complex FPGA where uh, JTAG types of uh, instrumentation gets, uh, well, goes out of steam. And here, if you allow me to finish this presentation with a glimpse over what we are busy with now. So exhaustively, this is a new uh, product we, we, we are working on. It's, it generalizes the approach of exhaustive and adds a lot to it. First, this is a fully modular ar architecture based on a chassis, which allow you to uh, actually scale the resources you have. Here, you can scale your bandwidth and storage it will be also it is also a multi-user and multi-target board as you see so you can connect multiple boards it's a multi-user uh, tool that is accessible to a network based on a client server architecture and it's also a multi-fpga capture system 
So it's time for me to thank you for your attention during this webinar and uh, I wish you a very pleasant day onwards. Bye-bye now.